Here we're going to tie the backstabber carp fly. First thing we're going to do is get our thread started. And we're going to have a pair of medium black dumbbell eyes or brass eyes ready here. We're going to tie these in a little bit away from the eye of the hook, about maybe a third of the way back from the eye. I want to leave a little bit of room up there at the eye of the hook. All I'm going to do is just kind of X wrap these eyes into place, go under them a couple times. Then I'm going to take my thread back to the basically the bend here. I'm going to get some SLF Whitlock dubbing ready. You can use a lot of different colors for these backstabbers. I'm going to use here, it's a red squirrel nymph dubbing. It's kind of got an orangish, reddish hue to it. It's a good color for your crayfish colored backstabber. And I'm just going to spin this up here. Just kind of build it up as I go forward. I like to have a bit of a taper to it as I work my way forward on the thread or on the shank of the hook. Pretty easy dubbing to deal with too. You don't really need wax. I just use either the oil from my hands or a little bit of spit to help it adhere to the thread. It's got just the right amount of flash to it and natural bugginess. Now once we get to the eyes, I'm actually going to take this dubbing and I'm going to wrap around these eyes. I'll dub this a little bit more sparse. i just kind of coat the thread with it. And put just enough on to cover up all that work we did up front here. There we go. Now the next thing to do, it's easiest if you actually invert the hook for this step. We're going to get a piece of marabou here. I'm going to be using a burnt orange. I'm going to be tying the crayfish color. We're going to tie in a plume that's about one and a half times the length of the shank of the hook. I'm going to do a nice loose wrap over it and just tighten down. Then we can trim out the excess here. You want to make sure you trim all these pieces here very close. We don't want to build, a, build it up too much. Have them get caught. So I give them a good trimming. Next, we're just going to lay down a couple more wraps just to kind of roughly, just roughly clean it all up. Then we'll take our thread back up to right in front of that chunk of marabou. Next, we're going to take two India henback feathers in natural. We're going to strip them so that we get rid of all the fluffy part portions of the feather stripped out of there, just exposing the, the tips of them. Then I'm going to get my hackle pliers out and I'm going to clip into the, the tip of these. Just like so. Now I'm going to stroke all those fibers backward and I'm going to tie these two feathers here in by the by the tip then I can trim the, the tip out of there And then I'll take my thread all the way up here to the eye. Now we're ready to collar these two pieces of India hen back. And what I'm going to do is just kind of gently stroke these fibers back. This will help them 
lay down that first on that first wrap. Now with each wrap after that, I'm just going to stroke them back. Don't worry if you catch a couple of them. We'll clean all those up here in a second. Then we can trim out the stems. Now what we're going to do is just stroke all these fibers rearward. Just lay down a couple of wraps right in front of them. That'll help help them lay back. There we go. Then you can whip finish. And that's all there is to the backstabber. Very simple, effective, easy little carp fly to tie. You can tie it in a lot of different colors. This marabou just sits there and breathes in the water. really entices those fish to eat. And you can get all the materials for this fly at intheriffle.com.